From the bubblegum country pop of Olivia Newton-John to the post-punk rock of the police, Juliana Hatfield's influences are wide and varied. Is her latest tribute album a badge of honor or a crime against music? My review of Juliana Hatfield Sings the Police is coming up next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name is Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. Cover songs are tricky business. No matter how one artist covers another, chances are you're not going to please every listener. Some people want cover songs to be performed as faithfully as possible to the originals and that to deviate would be almost sacrilegious. That's especially true, I think, when it comes to music by some of the most revered acts of all time. The Beatles have been covered endlessly, but to deviate from their canonical sound is, for many fans, akin to burning Bibles. My preference when it comes to cover songs tends to swing in the opposite direction. While I can appreciate unwavering reverence to the source material, I ultimately find that approach far less interesting and occasionally even pointless. When Weezer did their all 80s cover music album earlier this year, more often than not, their approach was to be faithful to a fault. When their version of Africa comes on, you'd be hard pressed to differentiate it from the Toto original if you're not paying close attention. Tribute in the form of imitation may take an advanced level of musicianship, but the absence of creativity makes such performances little more than an exercise in duplication. To that end, I'm far more interested in hearing artists bring something new to the table when they cover another artist's music. That's kind of my rule of thumb. If you're not going to take a unique approach to covering another artist's music, why even bother? But when it comes to full album tributes, I tend to be a bit more forgiving. Take last year's Juliana Hatfield Sings Olivia Newton-John, for example. On that release, indie rocker Juliana Hatfield had the audacity to take on the catalog of a pop music icon. More often than not, Hatfield stuck pretty close to the script on her Newton-John covers. I found the shortage of innovation to be a bit disappointing, but the overall album remained a mildly satisfying listen, a collection of songs that added up to more than the sum of its parts, if only just barely. But as I said, a full album tribute is a slightly different endeavor. Dedicating an entire album worth of songs to the music of a single artist perhaps requires more than a passing nod of reverence. I can understand a need or desire to have at least some of the performances follow the original blueprints. The trick is to strike an appropriate balance between being faithful and infusing new ideas into the music. With her Olivia Newton-John project, I thought Juliana Hatfield tipped the scales a bit too much toward faithful recreation. But on her new effort, I was pleased to see the balance shift toward more creative reinterpretation albeit ever so slightly. Juliana Hatfield Sings the Police is the second volume in what now appears to be an ongoing series of tribute albums. This time around, Hatfield pays homage to an act whose music arguably hues a bit closer to her own genre. That genre proximity goes a long way toward lending the entire effort a greater sense of legitimacy, shall we say, than her previous more pop-oriented tribute. Hatfield has always had a bit of an edge, and that lends her takes on these police tracks a heightened sense of gravitas. The reason that's important here is that when Hatfield's performances are at their most faithful, it's that level of authenticity that makes the effort successful. That's quite different from when she covered Olivia Newton-John. On that album, when Hatfield's versions remained faithful to a fault, they occasionally had an air of novelty about them. Not so when Hatfield sings the songs of the police. Every one of her performances comes across with an absolute rock and roll sincerity. Hatfield sets that tone right off the bat with the opening track on the album. Album. Can't Stand Losing You is in no way a reinvention of the original, but instead it does something perhaps more important. Straight away, Juliana Hatfield locks into the early 80s post-punk vibe with all the confidence of Joan Jett letting the world know cock rock isn't just for the boys. That's a spirit she embraces even more later on the album when she goes all in on covers of Rehumanize Yourself, It's All Right For You, and a lesser-known police track, Landlord. Now, while none of those songs really departs from 
from the path of the originals, I think the fact that these are arguably lesser known songs makes it a bit more forgiving. I can't say the same for Hatfield's take on de do 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 de da da da, a song that's ridiculous by design and begs for a fresh interpretation. The same goes for Every Breath You Take. Now at this point it's become cliche to say that the song is misunderstood because honestly, is there anyone that doesn't hear it as a stalker song? Regardless, Hatfield's version is a tragic missed opportunity. She maintains near flawless fidelity until the very end. Only the final 20 seconds of the song approach bold originality with a vocal breakdown and a Beatlesque instrumental sting, and then it just ends, right when it was threatening to get interesting. Thankfully, Hatfield does take chances on other songs, most notably the iconic Roxanne. This is likely to be one of the most divisive songs on the album, with its ominously sparse, dirge-like instrumentation. It definitely hit me as a WTF moment on my first listen, but it grew on me in subsequent spins. I can understand how some listeners might not take to it, though. On the other hand, I challenge you not to like the punked-out reinterpretation of Murder by Numbers. This has always been a dark and sardonic song, but by the time the police wrote and recorded it for the Synchronicity album, their punk days were far behind them. Hearing Juliana Hatfield tear it up here harkens back to the roots of the police, and you could easily imagine that this is how they might have recorded the song if it had been part of their debut, as opposed to their finale. Meanwhile, Hatfield goes in the opposite direction for her take on Next to You, where she turns an early career rocker into a mid-tempo jam. I really like the electronic percussion with flavors of Closer by Nine Inch Nails and how its meticulously rigid rhythm provides a sonic contrast to the fuzzed-out, over-distorted guitars. Tempo change is also at the core of Hatfield's version of Hole in My Life, which boldly trades the original's 4-4 time signature for a dirty grunge-slash-blues waltz. It's an idea that sounds crazy on paper, but it actually works really well and feels right for the sentiment of the song. Overall, I think this tribute to the music of the police is a modestly successful one. As I said before, that band's post-punk sound isn't as much of a stretch for Hatfield as Olivia Newton-John was last year. I also think she deserves credit for some strategic song selection here. While we do get a few mega hits like Roxanne and Every Breath You Take, other more obvious options like Every Little Thing She Does and Don't Stand So Close To Me don't make the track list, leaving room for unusual choices like Hungry For You and Landlord. I think inclusion of those lesser known songs help give the album greater cohesion and a stronger sense of identity. At the end of the day, though, the bulk of the credit has to go to Andy Summers, Stuart Copeland, and Sting. Ultimately, they were the masterminds behind every one of these songs, and they rightly deserve an honorable tribute, which is precisely what this album delivers. There's a few surprises along the way, but as a whole, the album adds up to a respectful testament to a legendary band's authority. So, I'm giving Juliana Hatfield Sings the Police by Juliana Hatfield an X rating of 6 out of 10. It's a satisfying continuation of her tribute series that leaves me curious to hear what direction she'll go next. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Plus, check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.